today we are going to speak about uh, combinability resources. Yeah, and my webinar is named Merry Words Wisely. Uh, let us start from the outline. Uh, we are going to look at the specifics of words and the theory of collocations. Then we'll uh, look at the layout of dictionaries and the lexicographical notes, yeah, what they mean and how we can use them. Uh, we'll also uh, find out what are the reference resources we might use when we prepare our manuscripts or um, yeah, scientific reports. And we will certainly have a lot of extensive practice. If you have any questions during our webinar, please yeah, put them down in the chat. And then at the end, I will be able to answer. I hope I will be able to answer all of them. So off we go. Let's begin. When we uh, write or read or prepare any text, it contains plenty of... I'm sorry. Natalia, can you help me? Right. Sure, okay. sorry. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. So when we look at the word, yeah, at the text, we can see that every text contains words. And as William Shakespeare once asked a question, yeah, what's in a word? So let us think about that. Uh, I want you to use our chat and to type in yeah, the answer to the question, what do we need to know about a word to use it? Just any questions yeah, or any answers, I'm sorry. I can see your messages, so mm -hmm, thank you, Irina. Possible context, thank you. The meaning, obviously. Yeah, we need to know the meaning, right, thank you. Image, mm, interesting. Yeah, but part of speech and collocations, great. Svenja. Yeah, alphabet, okay, yeah, we definitely need to know the alphabet, right. Uh, yeah, whether it's a verb, a noun, or any other part of speech. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. De connotation. Thank you. Thank you, Constantine. Right. Yeah, so we need to know quite a lot of uh, information about the words. That is true. And actually, if we uh, metaphorically imagine the word and what it is based, the knowledge of the word is based on, we can imagine the three whales, yeah? Use, or sorry, form, meaning, and use. So let us look into these categories in detail. Yeah, when we speak about the form of the word, we mean both graphical form, how the word is spelled, and its ordeal form, how we pronounce it. We also mean the parts of the word, the prefixes, suffixes, endings, your roots, your, everything that can help us to change the word into your, different parts of speech. And certainly it's grammatical form. You mentioned all of these elements. Yeah, we definitely need to uh, take a look at the meaning and the meaning of the word can be direct or indirect. Yeah, it can have some connotations, additional meanings, or associations that we have with this particular word. And finally, use. Yeah, we can pay attention to the frequency the, uh, of the word, yeah, the register, whether the word comes from a formal or informal register, whether it is appropriate to use it in academic discourse or we'd better leave it for communication with friends. Yeah, we uh, definitely need to know its yeah, grammatical behavior and collocations. Yeah, so everything is included into these three concepts, form, meaning, and use. And now I've got another question. <laughs> Which elements, in your opinion, are crucial for us to 
use the words freely. What do you think? You can voice out your answers. Yeah, if somebody wants to answer, you're welcome. If we want to use the words freely, which of these elements are crucial, are most important? Okay, any volunteers? All of them. Yes, yeah, somebody has written it down in our chat. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah, that was a bit of a pro provocative question. Certainly, we need to know all of them. And then, yeah, another question. And you can either use a chat or voice it out where we can get the information about words. Dictionary? In the dictionary, thanks a lot. Yeah, the, the answer is quite obvious, but well, thank you. But actually we can go further. And there are two ways, as you can see at this slide. Yeah, we can learn it from experiential learning. And that is when we read or listen to something or watch some videos. Yeah, if we do it, not only for the content, but also to notice words, we can learn a lot and we can appropriate a lot later on. And the other way is dictionaries. Yeah, the variety of them, and I'll speak about them a bit later. Well, let us practice a little bit. I'd like you to read a passage and uh, look at it from the perspective of, you know, from a very pragmatic perspective. You think about some collocations that you might borrow from this text and use later on in your manuscripts. Yeah, I'll give you a minute to read it and then to type in the Zoom chat yeah, as many collocations as you might find useful. Mm, somebody has started typing. Yeah, thank you. Right, yeah, well, thanks a lot. To be scaled up, yeah, great collocation. We might use it in a variety of contexts. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, another one, rigorous trials. Also, yeah, a very good collocation. I wonder what, what are rigorous trials? How can we define this? Freeze. Yeah. Any ideas? Okay. Rigorous. If something is done very, rigorous. Yeah. Sorry. Very, very, very eager trials or something. A lot of. Efforts. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very detailed. Yeah. Thank you, Yelena. Yeah. Very thorough. Re yeah. Rigorous. Good. Yeah. Then data collection. Also very good collocation, phone-based survey. There are, yeah, there is a variety uh, of surveys and one of them, extensive way. Thank you, right. Where, by the way, where is uh, this text from? Where do you think we can read such a uh, piece of writing? What context? Is it from what discourse? Well, we can look actually at the some research. Yeah, definitely fine. We can look at the link uh, at the bottom of the slide. Yeah, so this is an academic paper, and actually it comes from a medical journal. Yeah, it's an article uh, connected with uh, collecting data. Uh, from the patients. So, yeah, as you can see, despite the fact that this article comes from a medical journal, we can find a lot of useful collocations to use in a variety of uh, uh, texts yeah, in different spheres. Yeah, it could be a technical review. Yeah, it could be used to discuss methodology. Yeah, to describe the methods. Absolutely right. Yeah, and we can use it to yeah, describe or to write about mathematics, linguistics, biology, no matter what. Yeah? So that is why let us be pragmatic. Let us yeah, read not only for content, but also 
for noticing a variety of phrases. And well, let us take a look at some of the uh, uh, collocations that I have highlighted for you and that I think could be useful. Yeah, like baseline survey. Yeah, how can we uh, identify this idea? What is a baseline survey? Any ideas? Okay. So the serving contribution, which is the base, which gives the, mm -hmm. which is the main in the literature right now. So that oh, right. was maybe yeah. classical okay. one. Well done. Thanks a lot, Helena. Yeah, that is a standard survey. Yeah, that can be used as a pattern. That's right. Yeah, something can have the potential, also a very good collocation. Yeah, we can use it to describe a variety of uh, uh, research types of research. To be scaled up, yeah, how can we uh, define this phrase to be scaled up? To be extend, extended. To be extended, absolutely right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Yeah. Right, extensive way. Something can be done in an extensive way. Yeah, Yulia has already mentioned that to, to scale something up, that is to extend it. So extensive way, yeah, quite large, yeah, large scale. Okay, feasible method. How can we define this phrase? Feasible method. Yeah, what is feasible? which can be implemented so it's ready to use ready to use that's right which can be obtained easily yeah possible to reach thank you yeah i can see that yeah some of you are participating by writing in a chat right and then data collection obviously yeah, to be further explored i think yeah we don't need to discuss this yeah validity checks what are the validity checks Validity checks. Uh, uh, this mm -hmm. is analysis uh, of, uh, well, let's say, uh, data quality. Absolutely right. Yeah. How quality is the data that we have obtained? Absolutely right. Good. And finally, large scale survey. So, what we were doing with you now, we were noticing the vocabulary that we might further on appropriate and use in our own writing. Well done, thank you. Let us move on. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the words do not exist in an isolated environment. Yeah, they don't go alone. They are always uh, found and used in collocations or phrases. Uh, let us take a look at the word that we have in the circle, the word challenge. And I'd like you to use our chat and type in any possible collocations that we can form with these words off the top of your head. Yeah, you can have collocations with verbs plus challenge, yeah, or adjectives plus challenge, or, well, probably challenge plus prepositions, or any other, your yeah, noun plus challenge, whatever comes to your mind. Yeah, I can see some messages, vocabulary challenge, fantastic, yeah, face a challenge, great challenge, wonderful, and big challenge. Thank you, right. Any other ideas? Challenge two, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Yulia. Nice. To accept challenge, yeah, Eduard, right. Thanks for contribution. Overcome the challenge. Yes, we, yeah, sometimes we have to overcome challenges. Amazing. All right, fine. So here in this, yeah, flower, we can see some other, uh, collocations with this word, yeah, and you mentioned some of them, yeah, we can face challenge, 
uh, yeah, respond to challenge, something can pose challenge yeah, to us, or we can face challenge from, yeah, the challenge can be major or enormous or tough. And there are plenty of other collocations. Uh, where do we learn about collocations? Yeah, any ideas? Where do we learn about them? Yeah, well, thank you, Xenia. In thesauruses, that's right. Anywhere else? Literature, professional literature. In prof of course, yeah. Again, when we read professional literature, we notice not the singular isolated words, but we look at the environment, the collocations that will make them much more useful. And yeah, Edward has contributed well done, Andre has also contributed with the uh, link to a good resource, right? Collocation dictionary, wonderful. So here you can see one of the, yeah, one of my favorite resources. Yeah, the dictionary, which is named freecollocation.com. Uh, uh, it's uh, powered by Oxford University. And here you can see the screenshot from their web page where I typed the word challenge in. Yeah, and as you can see, you can find uh, a variety of data concerning the collocations. And that is especially necessary when we are writing our paper and we want to be more precise. Yeah, or we want to show the how rich our vocabulary is. Yeah, we don't want to repeat the same ideas again and again, you know, the same words. Yeah, as you can see, we can find over 20 different adjectives that we can use with this word. Yeah, in addition to everything that we mentioned. Yeah, a variety of verbs. And well, we can see that challenge is used in a variety of meanings, as well as yeah, in a variety of uh, grammatical forms. So yeah, go ahead and use collocations dictionary. That is a very useful resource. And we are moving forward. And uh, I'd like you to open the uh, worksheets that you were sent before our webinar. And I'll ask my colleagues to add them uh, to our chat once again, just in case. Um, yeah, does everyone have the worksheets? I hope everyone does. All right, we have- The worksheet is now in the chat as well. Yeah, thanks a lot, Natalia. Right, so could you yeah, download the worksheet and open it, please? And we're going to look at the activity number one. You've got here, the same uh, text that we discussed a few slides ago. And I'd like you to uh, remember the collocations that were used in this text. I'll give you a minute to do it on your own. Let me yeah, keep the time. So please work on your own. Take a minute and write them down. All right. So, well, yeah, wonderful. Thanks a lot. I see that some of you are ready. Yeah, let's wait a couple of seconds more. Go ahead. Well, there are 10 gaps in this text. So, in the chat, could you type in the number of gaps that you've managed to fill in and you are absolutely sure about? Just for me to know the statistics. Well, 10 out of 10, Yelena, bravo. Yeah, Yulia, nine out of 10, very good job. Seven, also great, yeah, fine. Okay, Funxenia, don't worry. Yeah, we're going to check that and that will be better next time. Yeah, fantastic. So right now, I want you to go to the breakout rooms. You will work in the groups of uh, yeah, 
three to four people, and you will have about a minute and a half to discuss what you have got and to help each other fill in the rest of the gaps yeah, and probably correct the mistakes if you have any. And then we'll get back to the main room and discuss them all together. So off you go. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. And let us get back to my screen sharing. Yeah, well, I visited some of your groups and I could hear that there were some troubles. Yeah, you could not remember some of the collocations. That's not a problem at all because, yeah, actually to start using the collocation, we need to meet it several times, obviously. And we can develop the skill of uh, yeah, noticing it and then retrieving and appropriating it. So don't worry if you didn't manage to do it first time. Yeah, next time it will get better. Right, so let us uh, check what we have got. Yeah, if you have yeah, any ideas, one second, I'll open the chat so that I could see your messages. Let's start with gap number one. Yeah, what survey did we have there? Yeah, can you type the word in the chat? Survey number one. Aha, uh -huh, thanks a lot, colleagues. Yeah, baseline, there was a baseline survey. Okay, number two, what collocation did we have here? This mobile solution has the mm hmm. Well done, Yulia. Potential. Yeah, Yelena, Katerina, wonderful. Yeah, has the potential. Right. Number three. Who can help us with number three? To be scaled. Yeah, scaled up. Right. Well done. And number four, scaled up in an extensive way. Yeah, Tamara, Ekaterina, Eduard, yeah, nice, extensive way. Wonderful, number five, yeah. What kind of method do they speak about? Method, what kind of it? Any ideas? Yeah, wonderful, feasible, a feasible method. Right, number six. Data, data collection. Yeah, I hope you didn't have a problem here. Uh, number seven needs to be, yeah, further explored. That's right, further explored. Well done. Number eight, please. Yeah. No, not validation. Number eight, validity, validity trials, you mean. Nope. Eight. Quality. Mm -hmm. Rigorous. Thank you, Tamara. Yeah, good job. Rigorous controlled trials. Right. Number nine. Who can give us number nine? That's where validity goes. Yeah, validity checks. Wonderful. And number 10. Large. Mm -hmm. surveys. Yep, right, large scale surveys. Great job, thanks a lot. So here you can see all of them once again. And what we were doing with you is named retrieval. We were drawing the vocabulary that we met before just a few minutes ago, yeah, from our memory and tried to use them in the text. And this skill, as I mentioned earlier, it can be trained. So be pragmatic when you read anything, yeah, when you do the scientific research, you read extensively, collect the vocabulary, not only the ideas, but also the vocabulary that you can use, retrieve, appropriate yeah, and insert, integrate into your writing. Thanks a lot. And we are moving forward and getting to the second option, yeah, second way, second source of information uh, about words. And certainly, as you mentioned earlier, 
these are dictionaries. Yeah, well, there are different types of dictionaries. Yeah, we can have paper dictionaries or electronic ones. Yeah, does anyone use any paper dictionaries these days? Yeah, you can give me some reactions. No, not any longer. I'm a huge fan of dictionaries and I have to confess that in the past, I used to buy every new edition of Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary and Longman Dictionary. It was just, and now I have, I don't know, five or six <laughs> dictionaries updated and well, they, they are a part of my library. Right, well, sometimes, yeah, Yulia and well, so, some of your colleagues use paper dictionaries. Yeah, I like this feeling of yeah, leafing through them. Good, paper and electronic ones, great. Uh, we also have bilingual and monolingual dictionaries, great. And well, the dictionaries can be alphabetical and thesauruses or based on the topic yeah, integrated by the keyword. Today, we are going to speak about electronic monolingual thesauruses because with yeah, the era of digitalization, we actually uh, don't need to live through the real dictionary, paper dictionary any longer. We can just get online, uh, find the dictionary that we like, yeah, and get the definition. Uh, well, there, there is a variety of dictionaries in English. It's one of the uh, I would say most lexicographically described languages in the world, but we are going to look at the top seven, top seven dictionaries. And these are Cambridge Dictionary of English, uh, Collins Dictionary, uh, Lexico, that is a learner's dictionary, very user-friendly. And if you have never used it, I highly recommend, uh, powered by Oxford. Uh, there is a Longman Dictionary of Contemporary English, uh, Macmillan Dictionary, uh, Merriam-Webster for those who prefer American English variant. Yeah, so you're welcome to use Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And finally, Oxford Dictionary, Advanced Learners one. Right, all of them are absolutely free. You can use them online. And well, you can just choose one of them, the one that you like most, maybe yeah, you like the interface, you like the colors, the layout, and just make it your regular habit to double check the words that you uh, integrate into your manuscript. And our uh, purpose today is to uh, show you uh, the majority of these dictionaries so that you could try them out, see how they work, how they are organized, and maybe make your choice today. Modern dictionaries, as long as they are online, they have overcome the uh, challenge of volume. Yeah, the creators, the lexicographers, they don't have to think about how many pages they should insert all the information into. That is why they contain a lot of important and useful information. In addition to definitions of the words, they also can give you the information about the frequency of the particular word, yeah, how often it can be met in a variety of texts, or the level of the words. It is a really uh, necessary feature when you are preparing for some international exams, because in order to get a high score and to be uh, ranked high in your level, you need to use the vocabulary of the particular level. So that's where you can see whether yeah, it is of the right level. Uh, they have plenty of examples from uh, corpora, some of the dictionaries contain translation. They can give you the information about synonymy. Uh, they have inbuilt thesaura, collocations dictionaries, and even grammar reference books. So to, if you select a dictionary wisely, 
you can have a lot of features built in into one dictionary. As you can see, yeah, with these ticks, uh, not each of them contains all of these features, but uh, the most thorough, the most comprehensive are the Cambridge Dictionary of English and Collins Dictionary. So we will try out both of them a bit later. Well, let us move on to extensive yeah, practice. And first of all, I'd like you to take a look at the layout of a Cambridge Dictionary. Yeah, one of the most comprehensive, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, this is a print screen from a web page of a Cambridge Dictionary. And as you can see, yeah, it contains a dictionary itself, yeah, the uh, search line where you can uh, type in any word you need to uh, define. It has a translator inbuilt here uh, from and into a variety of languages. It has got grammar reference. It has got thesaurus, yeah, that is the uh, thematic dictionary. Uh, it gives you the information about the part of speech of the word. It also gives you the information about its pronunciation, both in a transcribed way, and if you press the button, it will pronounce it for you in uh, a British variant and the American variant. Some dictionaries like Collins English Dictionary even have inbuilt short videos where the speakers of English pronounce the words for you. So it makes it easier to understand how to pronounce them. Well, here it is, yeah, this dictionary, Cambridge English Dictionary gives you the information about the level of the word. So if we look at the word aim, we can see that it is a B1 word, yeah, an intermediate word uh, by the Sefer scale. Um, it's got the meaning over here, uh, a variety of examples, and sometimes they are extended, and synonyms, so quite many of them. So yeah, there is plenty of information to learn about one particular word. Well, let us practice now, yeah? And while practicing, we are going to answer the same question again and again, why we need dictionaries. And the first answer would be because we can find out grammar patterns and collocations. I want you to open your worksheets again. And there you have the interactive link to the dictionary I'd like you to use. Today we will use uh, four different dictionaries just for you to try them out. Our first dictionary will be the Cambridge Dictionary of English, the one which we have just looked at. Um, go in, yeah, have you managed to follow the link? Could you give me some reaction? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I'd like you to work on your own and to choose the correct option, the correct word in italics to complete these sentences. And I really urge you, even if you are sure that you know the word and you know the uh, uh, collocation, double check it with the dictionary because sometimes there are some revelations, yeah, some surprising discoveries. I'll give you yeah, a couple of minutes. I think yeah, a minute and a half will be more than enough. So work on your own and find out what we can use with this particular uh, words and phrases. Let us check yeah, what we have here. Um, who would like to, to help me? Yeah, who would like to take the first one? Yeah. Any volunteers? All right. Okay, no volunteers. I think I can do Agreed. that. Great, yeah, great, yeah. go ahead. Okay, so oh. uh, number one. Yeah. Uh, De Ruta's work in the 1970s influenced the development of computer science. Absolutely so. right. Influenced the development of computer science. Thanks a lot. 
because this is the word, yeah, the verb that is usually confused. A lot of even native speakers make this mistake and use, yeah, influenced on, but well, we don't need any preposition. Thank you. All right, B, please, who can help us? May I try? Yes, certainly, they certainly. They seem to have no uh, effect uh, whatsoever on the plastic. All right, the first or the second one? Second one, effect. Okay, I would disagree. I would say the first one is used here, but thank you for the attempt. Yeah, the first one is a noun, yeah, while the second one is a verb. Ah. And here we need a noun, yeah, have no effect, yeah, because we have already got a verb. All right, but that was a nice try. C, please, who would like to help us? C, please. No volunteers. Uh, no. I hope to come off. Yes, please. Uh, everyone hoped for a positive outcome of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Outcome of the meeting. Absolutely right. Yes, certainly. Outcome of the meeting. Good job. Okay, D, please. The reason for. The well failure. done. The reason for the failure. Exactly. Again, a very tricky word. Very often you can see people writing reason of something. Okay, wonderful. E, please. The impact on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. On, right. The impact on the polar ice, right. Good. F, please. Ending. Ending or end. <laughs> okay, that should be an end. Yeah, because if we look them up in a dictionary, we can see that end. That is, yeah, the, the end. Yeah, as that's what they write in the films. But ending is either the last part of the story or the part of a word, yeah? For example, ending s in the plural form, yeah? Job, jobs, yeah? So here we need the word end, yeah? The end, the final part. Fine, and finally, G, please. Shows, <clears throat> the data show. The, no, the data shows, if you look oh, it up in the dictionary, yeah, you could see that when we use the data in scientific, in academic discourse, yeah, it is usually used as an uncountable noun and is followed by a verb in the uh, singular form. So the data shows, pay attention to the whole article yeah, in the dictionary because there could be some notes at the bottom, scroll it down to make sure that uh, you have yeah, found all the information. Although we know that, yeah, there is a plural and a singular form, datum data, yeah, data is the plural form, but in scientific discourse these days, it is used with a singular verb, yeah, the data shows. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Let us move on. And we are going to do another activity. Uh, we are relocating, transporting ourselves to an online Macmillan dictionary now. And using this dictionary, I'd like you to uh, find out yeah, more formal equivalents to the words in bold. There could be certainly more than one option, and I will unite you, I will send you to the breakout room so that you could work in teams and have several minutes to discuss it together and to find some formal wording, because it is really important to distinguish between formal and informal uh, vocabulary. One second, please. Breakout rooms. I think that, yeah, I'll just a moment. Uh huh. Yeah, you will work in the groups of three and four. 
Uh, so off you go. You will have around three to four minutes to deal with it. And I'll be there to help you if you need me. So let us uh, discuss. Yeah. Did you manage to uh, discuss all of these words? No. Not all of them. Not okay. All. Some of the groups managed, some did not. But well, there is no singular answer, certainly. There is a variety. Uh, of options, and we are going to look at some of them, but there are plenty more. So don't worry if some of them are not mentioned here. Okay, do a survey. What other options might we have here? To conduct a survey. Conduct a survey, yeah, or perform a survey. Mm -hmm. Right, well done. Start research, yeah. Launch. Start launch research not bad any other ideas undertake undertake well done undertake research yeah or even pursue research also possible and commence research yeah there is a rule in english you know the longer the word is the more fancy it looks like yeah the more academic and impressive it uh, is i'm sorry uh, is uh, to originate research uh, appropriate mm, in this case no i wouldn't i i don't think originate is a transitive verb here yeah, yeah there somebody um, something originates yeah but you cannot originate research i'm afraid oh, thanks yeah you're welcome fine yeah well get, sorry get results yeah we can obtain results mm -hmm. yeah well what can we do with an example we can give example what else provide provide, provide example yep. yeah contribute well, we mm -hmm. yeah well done yeah or offer or present an example Set. demonstrate demonstrate an example yeah why not we can also do that why not Good. Find out the reasons. Discover. Discover the reasons. Why not? Yeah. Or ascertain. Determine. Or determine the reasons. Yeah. And well, many more words. Yeah. A lot of evidence. Ample. Yeah. Mm. What? Sorry? Ample. Ample evidence, well done, yeah, great word, fine, or abundance of evidence, yeah, just another good word. I'm failing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 that is also Maybe good. A, a big amount of evidence, a big amount. Big amount, or a large amount, I would say large amount of evidence, also possible, yeah, why not, yeah, good Positive effect. Positive effect. Positive effect, well done, or beneficial effect. Yeah. Bad impact. Negative. Negative, negative or corrosive. Negative. I didn't put negative here because it's obvious. Yeah, corrosive or maybe costly impact. Yeah, as some of the options. Fine. Large amount. Considerable amount. Considerable amount. Well done. Yeah, or significant amount or substantial amount. Good job. And maybe um, possibly presumably, presumably okay, well, or allegedly, yeah, or yeah, reportedly, and many other adverbs. Okay, thanks a lot. That was a great job. We are moving on to another dictionary, yeah, again, transporting ourselves to a Longman Dictionary of Contemporary English. And right now we are going to look at the dictionaries as a source to make our wording more flexible. Because yeah, in order to paraphrase some idea, yeah, we don't need to repeat it word for word. We can paraphrase it using negative constructions, for example. And here, I'd like you to use a Longman Dictionary of Contemporary English to add negative prefixes to the words in bold. Again, you will work on your own. I'll give you a minute and a half to work on it, yeah, to go to Longman Dictionary. Again, I really urge you to double check, even if you, are, you know for sure 
yeah, which negative prefix to use, just double check to be on the safe side. Okay, so let's begin. Well, let us see what we have got here. Yeah, let us start from A, who can help me with that? Yeah, this method is... Uncorrect. In Incorrect. incorrect incorrect yeah the method is incorrect okay b please misunderstood misunderstood, misunderstood. yeah well misunderstood or did not understand that is also possible okay c please it is ambiguous unambiguous unambiguous unambiguous, unambiguous. unambiguous. yeah straight and clear okay E please, uh, sorry, D please. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. That's right, inappropriate. Good. E? Incoherent. Incoherent. Well done. Incoherent. Incoherent. Okay. Well done. Right. F please. Insensible. Insensible. That's right. And the last one, G? Unloyal. Unloyal. Loyal. Loyal. Right. If you, yeah, if you let us take a look at the uh, key once again. Yeah, if you used Longman Dictionary of English, you could see in the at the top line all the variations, all the words with the same root. And there you could find the word with a negative prefix. It's a very helpful feature of Longman Dictionary, where you can be sure that you are using the right uh, negative prefix. Fine, thanks a lot. And one more dictionary that we are going to use. This is Collins Dictionary of English. Uh, and it will help us to understand that we can use dictionaries to express our ideas more precisely. Uh, very often, yeah, and especially in English, which has got over a million words nowadays, there is a variety of words which can be translated, if you translated them into Russian, in the same way. For example, the words that are presented here in the box, all of them are connected with change, but they've got slightly different meaning. I want you to look them up in the Collins English Dictionary and insert them into the sentences from A to E yeah, in the correct form, yeah, according to what you find in the dictionary. Again, I'll give you a minute and a half to do it on your own, and then we'll check it together. Well, let us see what we have got here. Yeah, let us start from A. Who can help me with that? Yeah, this method is uncorrect. In, in incorrect. 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 Yeah, the method is incorrect. Okay, B, please. Misunderstood. 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 Yeah. Well, misunderstood or did not understand, that is also possible. Okay, C, please. It is ambiguous. Unambiguous. 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 Yes, yeah. straight and clear. Okay. E, please. Uh, sorry, D, please. Inappropriate. 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 That's right. Inappropriate. Good. E. Incoherent. Incoherent. Well done. Incoherent. Incoherent. Okay. Well done. Right. F, please. Insensible. Insensible. That's right. And the last one, G. Unloyal. Unloyal. Disloyal. Loyal. Loyal. Disloyal. Right. If you, yeah, if you let us take a look at the uh, key once again, yeah, if you used Longman Dictionary of English, you could see in the at the top line all the variations, all the words with the same root, and there you could find the word with a negative prefix. It's a very helpful feature of Longman Dictionary where you can be sure that you are using the right uh, negative prefix. Fine, thanks a lot. 
And one more dictionary that we are going to use. This is Collins Dictionary of English. Um, and it will help us to understand that we can use dictionaries to express our ideas more precisely. Uh, very often, yeah, and especially in English, which has got over a million words nowadays, there is a variety of words which can be translated, if you translated them into Russian, in the same way. For example, the words that are presented here in the box, all of them are connected with change, but they've got slightly different meaning. I want you to look them up in the Collins English Dictionary and insert them into the sentences from A to E yeah, in the correct form, yeah, according to what you find in the dictionary. Again, I'll give you a minute and a half to do it on your own, and then we'll check it together. So let us take a look at the first uh, sentence. Who can help us? Oh, any volunteers? Uh -huh, thank you. Yeah, in, in adapting. In adapting to this expanding role. Well done, in adapting. Thank you. Be pleased. To evolve. To evolve. Computer software will continue to evolve in response to something. Well done. C, please. Transform. To transform, that's right, to change the form, yeah, to have some significant changes. Well done. D, please. Mm -hmm. Alter. Little altered. That's right. A little altered. Mm -hmm. Altered. Well done. And finally, the last one. People modify. To modify. That's right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so we can find all of them. And I hope the dictionary helped you to make the right choice. Okay, well, let us go on. Dictionaries are not the only way to uh, find out information about words and collocations they can be found in. There are some other resources that you can use to check combinability. And the first of them are corpora or concordances. Uh, again, English language is the uh, language which, can, which has over 90 different corpora and they contain over 2 billion uh, lexical units. So can you imagine this huge amount of data that we can rely on? Uh, all the concordances or corpora are uh, founded on the concept, on the idea of a uh, keyword in context, which can be abbrevi abbreviated as quick. And one of my favorite uh, concordances is presented here. This is Scal Sketch Engine. This is the concordance that unites the information from a variety of corpora. And you can be sure that if you yeah, haven't found the collocation here in scale sketch engine, uh, it is not authentic. And you'd better think of some other um, way of wording your idea. So keyword in context works like that. Yeah, for example, this is a screenshot from scale sketch engine. This is a free resource again. Uh, yeah, you type in the word or even a collocation that you would like to check and it will give you uh, all the variety of examples, yeah, hundreds of examples. Yeah, this is only the tiny part of them. As you can see, yeah, there are 97.77 hits per million. Yeah, this is a very uh, frequently used word. Uh, this word is highlighted and you can see all the possible variations of patterns and collocations that these words can be used in. 
I'm sorry, but this resource unfortunately uh, no more available for the Russian. Every, oh my God, today! <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Well, I think VPN can help us in yeah. this case. I hope so, at least. Uh, I I uh, right. well, uh, I I proved. Uh, VNP, it works perfectly. Yeah, yeah, that's it, right. I, I also use VNP, no, VPN, sorry. <laughs> right. Mm, that, are there, cool. excuse me, are there any other sources like that? So, or is it unique? Or are there uh, any other sources no, the, of the this kind? Well, there are some other sources. I don't uh, use them as frequently because, well, actually, just yeah, just a couple of days ago, I used it quite often. But I will uh, send you then, yeah, after we are done with this webinar, I will uh, provide my colleagues and they will send you the information about the other ones. Sorry about that. That was an unexpected. You know. not, it's not your, your fault. It's right. Okay, but well, that is great. So if you have an opportunity, please install uh, a VPN and use it because it gives uh, such a variety of ideas and you can actually check whether the collocations that you are using work uh, yeah, fine, yeah, if they are authentic or you have to paraphrase something. Sometimes you cannot find this information in the dictionaries. All right, and another very useful resource, we'll only touch upon that, but I highly recommend that you check it out, is an online grammar checker. You've probably heard about it. It's named Grammarly. Yeah, I see that some of my colleagues yeah, are yeah, showing yeah, their approval. Yeah, it's a fantastic resource. I've been using it in my practice for over five years so far. And it's getting better and better year by year. For example, yeah, recently they have uh, inserted the feature of tuning up the settings to make sure that you are sending the right message. It is free mostly. It has got some extended features in the premium version, but well, it's not necessary to buy a premium version. Yeah, so you can set the type of formality, informal, neutral, formal, yeah, domain, yeah, if you have the premium account, the tone of your message, whether you want it to be neutral or friendly or confident, yeah, your intention, if you want to inform people about something or convince them or tell a story or describe. And well, there is a variety of settings. And just one second, let me. Mm, a moment, please. Yeah, just just a second. I'll share with you uh, my screen with the web page just to show how it works. A second screen demonstration. Uh, hmm. Uh huh. Oprah. Right. Do you see my screen? Yeah. This is the uh, report of one of my students. And you can see that this uh, um, app, yeah, or this website uh, checks all the grammar and collocations. And it doesn't only highlight yeah, or underline the incorrect options, but it provides you with some ideas for changes. It helps you with punctuation. It helps you with the tone. It helps you with wording. So please check it out. And well, I hope you will yeah, you will find it useful as well. All right. Yeah, we are getting back to my uh, presentation. One second. One moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting back to screen sharing of my PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Here we are. And well, right now we are going to uh, practice a bit it. And then, yeah, those of you who have a VPN, you can use it. Those who don't, yeah, well, you can try out any other dictionary. Uh, just, yeah, because dictionaries can also be used here. Yeah, go to scale sketch engine. Yeah, please send me the pluses. I mean, those who can open that. 
that's a pity that not everyone will be able to use it any longer. Mm -hmm. Well, some of you can. Uh, so using a uh, scale sketch engine, I'd like you to check out uh, the best option in italics to complete the sentences. So I'll give you a minute and a half to do that. If scale sketch engine is not available, yeah, you can try out Grammarly, for instance, yeah, or any dictionary uh, from the ones that we have already used. They are all available. So a minute and a half. Okay, well, let us check. Let's see what we have got here. Yeah, who would like to take the first one? Then. Mm -hmm. No, I would disagree. Oh. <laughs> right, yeah, well, if we had a scale sketch engine available, we would see that, yeah, re the requirements are I different from, 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 yeah, are different from, and again, <laughs> there... <laughs> uh, a second, yeah, so corpus is works on the, in the way that uh, we look at the keyword in context, together with the other words that we want to use after it. And if we see very few hits, just two or three, that means that this is not the right choice. Yeah, the right choice will give you uh, hundreds of examples. So different from, there are hundreds of thousands of examples of this collocation. Good, B please, who can help me with that? Between. Uh, yeah, that's the right. Both, both options are, are possible. Both options are possible, but we have two candidates, candidates here. Yeah, and we have to look at, yeah, competition among the two or between the two, and it will give us between the two. Yeah, because among requires bigger number of people. Okay, C, please. Limitations. Technological limitations. Okay. Well done. Thank you. D. Numbers. Number. The number of protesters. Well done. Right. E, please. At. Oh. At. at. Aimed at. at is primarily aimed at children. That's right. Mm -hmm. F, F, please. I'm sorry. Yeah, my fault. Yeah, but well, that is actually, yeah, something is declining at an alarming Great. Yeah, this is the collocation. Uh, and finally, rate? sorry? Rate? Oh, rate. No, no, at an alarming rate. Yeah, rate. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, and finally, G. Abound. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, right. Abound. That's right. Yeah, theories abound. Well, thank you very much. And that brings us to the summary of what we have discussed today. To use the words properly, we need to know quite a lot of information about them, their form, meaning, and use. Uh, words do not exist on their own. They always form collocations. So the most productive way of learning new words or borrowing them is to borrow them as collocations, not as isolated words. While reading, uh, we should always keep in mind another purpose. In addition to reading for content, for getting information, we also should read with a focus on noticing and collecting collocations used in different texts for our further appropriation. Online monolingual dictionaries are free, available, and have a variety of useful features. And we can use them to find out grammar patterns, collocations, register, yeah, ways of expressing ideas. Yeah. And finally, yeah, we can use the variety of corporate concordances if we have doubts about our wording. That will do for now. Here you can find the variety of references that are used to prepare for this webinar. You will be sent all of them. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them now.